And the 11 year old says to me, well, what about me? (laughs) For an 11 year old to to speak up like that and say, well, what about me? And I said, son, what do you mean? What about you? Right. And he went on to share that with me. Mm. And then I said, well, how do you know this man? How do you know that it was specifically him? He said, because he works at my school. My Lord. <laughs> and and my, I said to my myself, I, was, I, was, I, I, I could not believe it, right? Now, what you should know is I knew something sinister was at play here. Because in the police report and the affidavit, it makes no mention of that 11-year-old. Wow! It's as if he did not. It makes it's as if he did not exist. Oh, but when you view God. the body worn camera, again, when you view the body worn camera, this child is in his underwear in the rear of a vehicle for no. hours, cr- crying. And in fact, the child asks, "Can he use the restroom?" And another officer tells him something to the effect, "Shut the hell up!" Wow! And so, and so, when you see something like that and you hear those things. And then to find out that this child is subjected to that mental torture every time he goes to school, it's unfathomable. And and, and and you're angry, and then that anger moves to action, which is why we file for the restraining order, right? But, again, going back to this thing of this, we all talk about, some people call it the school, the prison pipeline, the militarization of our schools, treating our schools as if they're prisons. That's exactly what we have here. And I believe there needs to be legislation that says, hey, if, you, if, if an officer, the school resource officer has had complaints of excessive use of force, bias, um, and other complaints made or alleged against him while he's at the police department, that officer shouldn't be around our children, whether it was That's sustained right. or not. Mm-hmm. Right? Which goes yeah. to the point that we shouldn't have police officers in our schools, period. Yeah. Right? These officers that go through, I can tell you because I've been through post-training. Post-training doesn't teach you how to be an educator, how to be, you know, a, a nurturer, how to be a father figure. It teaches you how to do one thing, and that's enforce the law. So um, it, 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 was, it, it was unbelievable when I heard about it, and, and it tells me that we have to be steadfast and knowing who exactly is around our babies at all times. If I could speak to something real quick, though. It is disheartening to then learn about what transpired in Mississippi. I wasn't aware of it. Um, The work that Attorney Shabazz is doing down there, I I commend the system for holding those officers accountable. But I think everyone listening to your radio show, as well as you guys are aware, it's long been time to do something about this. Yeah, and I've and I've said it, and I've said it, and you know we got a lot of things going on here in 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 Louisiana with this governor and this legislature, and I'm gonna say this openly, and I'm not I'm not putting any extras on it as as the young folks say, no cap. If black folks aren't careful, you guys, they will slide our butts right back into slavery. Mm. If we're not paying attention to what is going on here in our schools and our education and our healthcare system. Individuals in this country are making a, are putting their foot down, and they're trying to make sure that this remains a white dominant society, and we cannot allow them to do that. We fought long and hard to ensure that we're not uh, that the American and African American actually is uh, come to fruition, that the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment actually mean something, and we cannot sit back and be idle uh, and not vote not be participatory, not go to school board meetings, not go to city council meetings, not go to your water commission meetings. We have to be vigilant in what it is that we're doing to ensure that our uh, citizenship is not relegated back to slavery or second-class citizenship. Amen. And, you know, we've been joined by attorney um, Mawuli Davis, and Mawuli Davis, Davis, welcome to Igniting Change. Uh, we're so glad you've been able to join us. And I'm just thinking about uh, someone, I won't, uh, one of you who are on the show, you need to mute your phone. Because 
I'm getting feedback. There we go. Thank you. Um, but I wanted to talk about this phenomenon, uh, this ugly reality. You know, in Atlanta, you had the Red Dog Unit. Oh, yeah. Uh, right? Uh, you know, in Baltimore, Daryl, you had the Jump Out Boys, right? Uh, mm-hmm. in, in Chicago, they had the Holman Square. Uh, you know, horrific a uh, story of thousands of black folks run through this uh, illegal secret operation like the Brave Cave. And now we're talking about the Goon Squad. Uh, and, of mm-hmm. course, you know, Memphis had its own, you know, special Scorpion Union, I, I believe is what they called themselves, uh, that That's killed right. Tyree Nichols. Um, and now we're talking about, you know, these the Goon Squad – in Mississippi, there's no accident that all of these operations have so much in common. Uh, you know, you know I, I worry so much for our people like you do, Attorney Thompson, because they're at the mercy of these hidden, secretive, vicious, racialized, uh, you, know, uh, you know, these, these haters that have joined police forces clearly to, to hurt us. Uh, You know, what should we be doing about this? Because it's clear that, I mean, literally, when I heard the story of the goon swat, I thought they were talking about the Brave Cave. And I kept saying, Mm. isn't that the Brave Cave? Because it was so identical in the way that they operated, except for in this instance, they took a gun and shot a black man in the mouth. Uh, You know, Mm. and uh, all because... A white neighbor complained about the fact that two black men were, quote, living with a white woman. And they, uh, you know, assembled, all six of them assembled to, quote, uh, teach them a lesson. And they uh, went and they not only, you know, did all this you know, evil, you know, put syrup on them and all, and then made them wash and do all this sexual assault to them and all the rest of the stuff that they did. They shot the men in the mouth. And then had the nerve to tell them that they were going to send them back to their part of town, that they were going to send them across the Mississippi River and then never come back to Rankin County again. And had the nerve to tell these folks uh, that uh, and to threaten them, of course, which we you know see happens in every one of these stories. They always threaten people uh, and to plant a gun and drugs to try to justify mm. what they had done. And, uh, and and they've admitted to this, people. We're not just saying what we think happened. Uh, this has come out in open court. This is precisely what they did. So what do you want to say, my Wooly? You know, what do you want to say to this, to all of us listening? What should we be doing about this? How do we uncover the un, uh, the hidden uh, goon swats running around this country? In, in the words of, of Kwame Ture, we must organize, organize, organize. We just have to continue to organize. The the right and these forces are organized. And, and it may not seem like these are interconnected, right? That's mm. one of our greatest challenges is that we think we think that somehow this this is accidentally happening all over the country. But what has been created is a climate. And the climate has been created where our lives right now are even less valuable to the forces that want to control. As the brother stated, um, this is about what I believe is a last-ditch effort to try to maintain white supremacy at all costs. Uh-huh. So the, attack on, the attack on HBCUs, the attack on diversity, equity, and inclusion, the attack on our black bodies, all of it is connected because they are understanding that their their hold on power is slipping and that they are using any and all means to try to relegate us, to try to re-enslave, as the brother stated. We have to be more diligent, more um, ready to confront these issues than ever before. And so we're looking forward to you all coming um, to Atlanta tomorrow so that folks on the ground here can stand with you um, around Ahmaud Aubrey because 
we want and need the 100% justice that y'all have lifted up yes. and has been fought for. And this is a part of that fight. We can't take one step back. We've got to keep, as Matulu Shakur would say, we got to go straight ahead, straight ahead. We cannot back up off of this. And so uh, I'm grateful that, you know, we're able to be supportive in the way that we can and that we're connecting the dots around the country and it, it is not isolated. It's happening everywhere. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, Attorney Ryan Thompson, and um, and I will come to you, Darian and Destiny, uh, to you know to also talk about this issue. But Attorney, you know Ryan uh, Thompson, you learned a lot about how they got away with this. We believe they were operating this um, this uh, black site, this quote brave cave for how many years now? We believe they operated it. It appears that this has been going on for 10 years. Uh, there was something profound that I learned, and how I learned that is that all of your listeners will be familiar with the name Alton Sterling. Yes. And speaking with, and speaking with his aunt Sandra Sterling, who was like a mother to him, Alton shared with her that he was taken there and was released in the middle of the night after he provided uh, some information. Huh. And so this place has been up and running for about 10 years. It appears, um, uh, and so we're talking thousands of individuals who have been taken there to this black site. And again, you know, when I was on your show before, I think yeah. individuals there were some some people who reached out to me who, you know, was wondering was I, you know, putting again extras on what it is that I was saying. Again, I would yeah. invite your listeners to go and pull the Senate Hearing Committee reports. By, that was done by Senator Feinstein on torture and black sites. And look up the definition of what a black site is. Look up the definition of torture. And I will put before any court, anyone, I'll stand by it, that that's exactly what we have here in Baton Rouge and around the country. And what would you say to the, my question uh, that I said to, I asked Mawali, uh, what do you, what do you want to say to people who are listening and saying, I'm in you know, XY city. You think there's such a thing going on? I've heard some weird stories uh, that sound like what I'm listening to right now. Uh, what mm -hmm. should I be doing? You know, is there, you know, should we be investigating? Should we, you know, how do we deal with this? Because I've, I've heard some of these stories and I didn't think they were real. I just thought people were making stuff up. Uh, what do you what do you have to say to them? Let me just say this, and I'm 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 along the same lines with the brothers. Not along the same lines. I'm in I'm locking shelf with what that brother said and, and quoting Kwame Ture. Yeah, we have to communicate call. with each other. We ha we have to communicate with each other across these state lines. I'm not saying, and and I think that we should go back to BlackPlanet.com. It's something that we own because as we saw what happened to Brother Sean King, they'll kill you, they'll kill your platform to prevent the message from getting out. But to huh. that point, and we're, use, and we're using it, we need to communicate with each other. Uh, I would invite this brother to reach out to me so we can connect and we can uh, exchange contacts and we can talk <laughs> offline. Uh, any other attorney listening to this, any other activist, any other organizer that wants to reach out to me because I have stories to share. There's some things that I'm still learning. There's some uh, intelligence that I can share with them to help them identify if these things are going on in their community. Because, again, I'm telling you, if they can snatch us off the street like enemy combatants, insurgents, so-called terrorists, then there's no lie. telling what they can do to us. And it is of utter importance. One last thing, then, if I could. I know that you guys are organizing Atlanta. We should, every time a call is put out, if we are able to do it, we should be flying or mobilizing behind these families coming from all over the country yes. and say that we are not going to stand by this. I, you know, it's unfortunate that I just heard about this, uh, but the next time you guys organize, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that I'm there to help support that attorney and that family anywhere else that needs to, where I need to be around the country. <laughs>
And that's really appreciated. And it's one of the things that we've got to be certain that uh, that we take notice of is that, you know, th- there is a pattern and practice that we see that has developed across the country from these police departments that are exercising these types of, uh, of, of powers, particularly over the black and brown community, Barbara. And we know that just recently, within the last two weeks or so, uh, 